Hey, Crazy Billy here. Today we're gonna be talking about how to make a jewelry holder in Tinkercad. Yes, it's another tutorial on Tinkercad and shows you a little bit more of the fundamentals, so stay tuned! Crazy Will here from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, we're gonna go a little bit more in depth with Tinkercad. I'm gonna show you how to make this jewelry holder. Now, if you guys missed my last video, it shows you the very basics of Tinkercad. You can see that right here. Please click on that and watch that video first. It gives you a lot of great information on how to navigate and use Tinkercad. This one's gonna be a little bit more advanced, and I'm gonna show you how to make this jewelry holder that I've built for my wife. I actually put a C in there, because her name's Christina, and I put Pandora because this is actually for her Pandora bracelet. And I put a little notch at the top so that way the Pandora bracelet would just sit just like so. And then I made this little tray down here for her to put her earrings and other accessories. So when she goes to bed at night, this sits on her nightstand and it's a nice little convenient thing and it won me quite a few brownie points with my wife. Now I got pretty advanced with Tinkercad. You can see I actually made these sunglasses in Tinkercad and they're full plastic and I made them to exact measurements. So know a little bit about Tinkercad. I've been playing with it for over six months now, probably even longer, and I just want to share you some of the cool basic tips, little things like rounding off the edges, building different things. Now, one of the things that you are going to need if you're going to be playing around with this program, it will be a lifesaver, I highly recommend you guys get a caliber. It's just a lot easier to measure and figure out things. For example, how thick do I want to make this? Uh, that thickness looks good. What is that? 2.8 millimeters. So it's less of a guessing game. Another thing that was really good to try to figure out with this project is I actually measured the bracelet lit so that way I could see how high I wanted to make this whole handle so that way it wouldn't be too high or too low it wouldn't be bumping into things down here and then I also wanted to figure out how high I wanted to make the wall it's just an idea of measurements you're not measuring anything but you're measuring what depth and what you want this to look like because when it's in the computer it looks all fine and dandy it gives you more of an idea when you use this and it's been really handy if you're gonna be doing projects like this now you can get those off of Amazon I think they're anywhere from 15 to 20 dollars well worth it. Mine's digital. I like to be able to just measure stuff and see the reading and go on with my business. So let's go over to the computer and I'll show you how I built this in Tinkercad. All right, so here we are on the website. Go to Tinkercad.com. Once you're there, we're just going to click on new design and it's going to open us up a new workspace. The first thing we're going to do, and I'm going to go a little quick, guys, is we're going to grab a box right here and we're going to just place it in there. And now what we're going to do, make the height for. I figured it, I wanted it to be 94 by 94. All right, we'll click and drag that right over here. And now what I wanted to do was make a nice round edge on this. So now we're gonna go over here and we're gonna find a special shape to round off these corners. Now, if you go to all shapes and we scroll down to the bottom, you'll see numbers here. I believe if it doesn't change, it should be in number 12. There's no other way to navigate in this, and if you do know a new new way to navigate through this, let me know. But it's number 12, and if you got it, I highly suggest you put it in your favorites. You just hit that little star, and then instead, it'll actually be, if you scroll down, favorites, and there it is, and then you can just click and drag it over. But we're gonna use this little piece, and we're gonna round the corners with this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this, select this, and we're going to align them to the corner. And we'll align it right to the corner, like so. We're gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna click and drag it right over to this corner, and we're gonna go ahead and rotate it, like so, 90 degrees. And we'll select this, and then this, and align it again. And just keep floating around until you can see your points that you want to use to align it. But that's what I'm doing right here. So now we're going to go ahead and duplicate this again. And click and drag. And I know there's an easier way of doing this, but I forget it. And I'm just showing you how I do it. Rotate this 90 degrees. Boom. And we'll take this piece first. Select this piece first and then this piece. And now we can align it and put it to the corner. Scroll around and put it to the corner. Boom. And now we'll duplicate this again one last time. Click and drag it over here. Rotate it around 90 degrees. Select the red first. So we won't move and then select this little corner piece if you will all right and then go to this right here 
It looks like everything's collected. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the corner pieces and we're gonna turn them into holes and they should be transparent. And we'll just select this whole thing and we're gonna hit a group. Boom! Now we got those rounded edges. Oh, we didn't get one correct. Let's go back, ungroup. Don't be nervous if this happens to you, it's not a big deal. Red first, then the corner, hit the align. And we'll go around and see where it's not aligning, and it's not aligning right there. There we go. And now we can select the whole thing again and group it. Boom. Now we have this perfectly rounded corner. Now you can adjust the roundness of the corners by shrinking them a little bit. And this is actually a little too round for me. You know, let's just do it the right way. Let's just take it off. I don't like how round those corners are. So we're going to change the size of this. I think I'm going to make this 10 by 10 and just round the corner like that. I'll just show you real quick what the difference is because I went down 10 millimeters basically. If I group it now, you can see how this corner is even smaller than this corner. So let's ungroup that. And I'm gonna go ahead and change those off camera so that way we can move along in this tutorial. All right, so now we're gonna bring another cube in here and we're gonna make this one 90 by 69. And we're going to make the height of this 10. And we're going to select the both of these and we're going to try to align them. Now I don't want this to be aligned perfectly. I want it to actually be aligned more towards the back. So what we're going to do is we'll use the arrow key to move back to right about there because I want to be able to put that Pandora name in there because my wife really wanted that in there. But I would like the edges rounded because you could see we're having a conundrum now here. I could line it up but where this corner is getting in the way. So we're going to do the same thing that we did to this. So what we'll do is we'll move this out of the way for now. We're going to make another corner piece and I told you to put it into your favorites so that way you could use it again and we're going to bring it out here. I'm going to do again. I'm going to go with 10 by 10 because I just like that number I guess. I want to make that height 18. Let's just do 18 just so we could get a grip on it and it won't be a pain in the butt and just for time's sake let's automatically make it a hole and we'll bring it over to the corner and again we're gonna go through the process of selecting this and aligning it. You already saw how I did it with that one. I'm gonna skip ahead on this part and not bore you with the details of making this. All right, so after you do the same thing that you did with this, we're gonna grab this one and we're gonna grab this one and we're gonna align them once again. This way and this way, boom. So now they are together. I'm just gonna take this one and I'm gonna hit the right arrow and I'm gonna make arrow it back. And we want them to go into each other the way they're going because that's what we want. So what we're going to do is duplicate this and we're going to make this one 65, 86 by 65. So that's basically what we're going for right there. And we're trying to make a lip of four around it. And we're going to go up. So we'll go up about four right there. And that shows you the height right there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this one and we're going to turn it into a hole. We're going to click on this one first, then the hole. And now we'll align it so that way it will be perfectly aligned. There we go. Now that's perfectly aligned. And what we'll do is we'll select all of this and we will group it. And once we group it, there you go. You have your jewelry tray with the holder right in the middle there. So that's what we wanted. That's basically how we wanted it. So since we're at this point, we'll go ahead and put the lettering in there and we'll go back to basic shapes and right at the bottom here, text. So we're just clicking the text here and we're gonna hit P. A N D O R A Pandora. Actually, I want to have the P capitalized, so we'll go back there and hit the P. Let's see this font. We're gonna make it a different color so we can actually see what the heck we're doing. We'll make it a well, maybe not that not the best on that. We'll do it yellow for now. Okay, so we have Pandora and we can change the font. I think, what did I go with? Let's see, I, I don't remember what I went with. I think I went with this. And you could do the spacing, you could do the height, the depth, it doesn't matter. We'll go right here and we'll just resize it manually. We'll hold down on shift so that way it keeps its proportions. That looks pretty good to me. And what we'll do is we'll go to the align tool and just center it, boom. Let's bring it down right about there. And I went smaller with the last one, so let, let's let's try to keep it close to what it was the last one. So we'll hit shift again and we'll shrink it down probably right about there. Select everything, align it center, bring it down a little bit, hit the down arrow. 
and then we'll click on this and bring it up a little bit. You do want it intercepting. If you're going to be 3D printing this, you want it to intercept. Otherwise, you might have some funky stuff going on. So don't make it exactly even because sometimes when you bring it to the slicing software, it has a hard time and then it's drawing it onto a solid. You actually want to make it one piece. So that's what you want to do. So with that said, let's select this and group it. So now we have the Pandora grouped with this as well. So now it's all one piece. All right, so now it's time to make the stand part of this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here again to our basic primitive shapes. We're gonna grab a cylinder. We're gonna leave it 20 by 20, but we're gonna make the height 78 because that's what I used the caliber to figure out what size I wanted for the bracelet. And we're gonna go to the top view here and I'm just gonna put it in two-dimensional perspective view, flat view. Okay, we'll call it flat view. All right, and we'll put it I'm gonna try and stick it in the middle right there. That looks good to me. And that's where I want the bracelet holder to be. And I'll put it back in three dimensional view so you guys could see this. I like the segments to be more, to make it more round when it prints. So I'm gonna bring this up to about 52. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this like so. And I'm going to rotate this one 90 degrees. Well, the front view we're going to go back to flat view and we're going to bring it to the side a little bit right about there and we're going to bring it to where this actually intercepts now you'll see this right here there's a little bit of a lip so we're actually going to change the dimensions of this now because i flipped it we have the dimensions a little little different i can't just go to this this one and change it to 21 so we're going to change it to 21 here Boom, and then we're gonna go for the up one now and change it to 21 because the perspective has changed. So 21. Yeah, it's still coming out a little bit. So you know what? We're gonna actually shrink this down a little bit. Make this one actually 19 and a half. So 19.5 by 19.5. Give that a little bit more girth. During the printing process, you have to think of the printing process. You don't want this to have a lip here, otherwise it'll print that lip and it won't look as elegant, it won't look as nice. We'll double check to make sure that these are aligned correctly and we'll just click this one right in the middle here. So just to make sure that this looks correct, there we go. Now you have your bracelet hold. Now you could stop here and you can go ahead and print this just like this. We'll combine all this and you could do that, but we wanna add a little more touch to it. See, my wife's bracelet has a bead on the top and I measured that bead. When I measured it, I made it a little bit bigger so that way it would sit in there. So we're gonna take just a regular cylinder, bring it into the view again. We're gonna make it 12 by 12 because I measured it, I think it was 11 and I wanted a little bit more space. So I went 12 by 12 by 12. You gotta do it all the way around, okay? So that's the bead now. And what we wanna do is kind of center it at the top. So first we're gonna go with the height. And if you remember, it was 78. So that, that looks fine. We'll go to top and we'll click and drag this over. And what we wanna do is zoom in so you don't accidentally click on something. Top view. And we'll click on flat view. That's why this is handy because you can see it three dimensional and then you can go into a flat view. What we'll do is we'll align this. And what we'll do is we'll select this first and then the ball. And now the ball will move, but not the bar. There we go, boom. So now we got that directly in the center. All right, we'll turn the ball into a hole maker. I like to keep my pieces separate. So we'll combine this first. Okay, so now that's one piece. Yep, one piece. We'll click on the ball and then this piece, and then we'll combine those. And now we got our little divot right in the top there, which is great. And we can look at it in three dimensional mode because it'll look better. If you remember I had C's on each side, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, and so what we're gonna do to make this easier is we're gonna combine these group. That'll all become one color. All right, so we wanna put the C's on each side of this. So what I'm gonna do to make a life easier is I'm gonna put the workspace right on the edge of that. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab the text tool and just put it right on the edge right there. We're gonna change the color of that text tool to green, and we're gonna change it to C for Christina, because I wanna add that C. So we'll go to right, we'll zoom in, go to flat view, and we'll hold down on the shift key, get up here, and we'll get that C centered. And that C actually works out, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna try and center this the best way I can. Now we'll go back 
to the regular view and I'm gonna put the workspace back to where it was and I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna arrow it in to halfway now if you see there's a little dotted line there that's the halfway point let's just arrow it over and we'll change this into one millimeter instead of 0.1 millimeter we'll try and get yep perfect that's where I wanted it we'll make that a hole and we're gonna duplicate it and we're gonna make it come out to the other side and we'll just arrow over we'll change this to five millimeters and we'll arrow this over Let's see if it stops right where we want it to pretty close where we want it that's fine so now we're gonna make the C look correctly so we're gonna to go to the rotate of this tool again we're gonna to go 90 degrees oh sorry 180 actually 180 boom flip it around there we go well, now we have a C on both sides it's right in the middle select this group it there you go it's done now you got the C on there and the C in there so that is it that is done and now if you want to export this out you would just go to export STL file boom it goes into our downloaded folder what we'll do is we'll swipe over to my other screen and we'll open up Cura go ahead and import this into Cura okay and there you go that's your actual size dimensions kept everything kept correctly and what we want to do is we want to put supports in we don't really need adhesion for this but we want supports in and if we slice this right now I'm gonna keep all these dimensions the same because it worked out really well for me and if we slice this it'll be eight hours and 44 minutes it's gonna cost you a whole dollar 63 it's gonna take 65 grams of filament and if we go to preview mode you can see where a lot of that's going which I tried it in tree mode and it didn't work very well so I just kept it like this this was the best way to do it I know it's using a lot of material but it is what it is and I only did it 20 percent and it prints really nice as you see is it's all one piece you don't have to worry about it see how the print Pandora is printing on top of it I should have made it go a little deeper so that way it actually interrupts it a little bit more but that's fine that's not a big deal the biggest thing is you want to make sure the hole for that is going to be like that because you want it to be all one piece it gives it strength so you do want to look at this and make sure when you're doing these that everything is kind of combined and making one shape see what I'm talking about is right where you see how like there's an outline for the actual rim and there's an outline for the hole there should have been outlines for the writing as well because it, it gives it more strength but it's not a deal breaker that's mainly the lip I wanted to make sure that there was more of a one piece the writing you can kind of get away with I would do, go back and actually bring the writing down more so that way it actually makes the shape that way your infill is actually part of that so in eight hours and 44 minutes you would have this done and make your girlfriend or fiance or hey maybe even your husband happy so that's basically how you build that in Tinkercad like I said I've been using Tinkercad quite a bit now you can make a lot with Tinkercad it's a very powerful basic program especially if you're just messing around with 3d stuff and now the jewelry holder like I said I wanted to make it for my wife and it was just a challenge I wanted to make an elegant looking stand with round edges so it was a little bit of a challenge and my wife got a big kick out of it now I used Hatchbox Gold. I wasn't overly impressed with it. That's this, what's, what these sunglasses are actually made out of. Wasn't overly impressed with the gold kind of look. Maybe it looks better on camera, but it wasn't a gold kind of gold. I wanted kind of a speckly looking kind of gold. And so it wasn't the greatest, but the stuff is really good. I've never had a problem with one of their rolls yet. That's it for me, guys. If this helped you in any way, please hit that like button and subscribe and hit that bell button if you want to get notified when I make a video. And remember, you could do anything if you put your Come on to it later, guys! I know what you're thinking. Crazy Will's Tech Show's over. What do I do now? Real simple, guys. You hit that like button and you hit that subscribe button. And then you check out my other videos. It's not over. I made a lot. It's been a good year.